Hey everyone, this is Eric Freeman and welcome to the Insider's Companion video for Chapter 7. If you're up to Chapter 7, you should be feeling pretty good because you're starting to really get a lot of JavaScript under your belt at this point and things only get more interesting from here. In fact, you're going to notice that your knowledge starts to snowball a little bit and we're going to be taking on more and more advanced type of topics starting with really this chapter, which is a chapter called Serious Types. And this is honestly one of the most unique chapters that I think we've ever undertaken. And it's based on getting through a lot of the more interesting types and values that you will encounter with JavaScript. And as we've said before, JavaScript didn't grow up in the academic world where it had big committees polishing it and making sure it was perfect before it hit the world. In fact, it really got thrown in the deep end with the Netscape browser, has survived very well, but it's got some weird stuff in it. And that's what we're going to uncover in this chapter. Now, the other thing to say about this chapter too is the stuff in this chapter is really the stuff that you're going to find that a casual scripter isn't going to know. This is really the stuff that uh, more advanced JavaScript programmers know, uh, more professional programmers don't have to be professional, but if you really know your stuff, if you've really mastered the language, you're going to understand the stuff in this chapter. And if you haven't, you're probably not going to. And so this is really our first chapter moving into some quite advanced topics. Now we're going to start the chapter talking about two interesting values, which we've mentioned before. There's undefined and there is null. We're going to walk through those talk about where you might see those and what you might do when you see those. And then we're going to talk about a very weird value called not a number. And this actually isn't a number you'll just see in JavaScript. Not a number is pretty common in most languages. Uh, it's a value with particularly weird semantics because, for instance, it's not equal to itself, which is quite odd. And so we're going to walk through that too and figure out what to do when we see this and how to use this value. Then we're going to move on to a topic which, again, this is a topic where a lot of casual scripters, they don't really quite know what they're doing. Um, you can get quite far in JavaScript scripting without knowing this, but it turns out that equality, or rather the equal signs that we use in conditionals within JavaScript are, are quite complex. You might think that it's just a matter of comparing numbers to numbers or strings to strings, but JavaScript actually does a lot behind the scenes to do things like type coercion. So for instance, if I compare a number to a string, JavaScript behind the scenes does what it can to convert those to the same type and then do a comparison on them. And that's uh, actually a convenient thing in a lot of cases, but it's a thing if you don't know about it, sometimes it can get you into a little bit of trouble. And also the rules in terms of how JavaScript tries to co coerce types uh, to get them to be the same to do the comparison are a little idiosyncratic. And so to really know the language, you want to take a look at what they are. Now, there's another aspect of equality too that, again, your casual scripter might not know, and that is there's another equality operator which isn't two equal signs, but it's three equal signs. And we're going to walk through what that means and why you might want to consider that as your new equality symbol of, or rather, equality operator of preference. Now, there's another thing in JavaScript that's a little messy and a little weird when you first see it. And that comes down to what values does JavaScript consider to be either true or false. Now, of course, we have the Boolean values, true or false, but it turns out that I can do something like if, and then the number zero, and then that's my entire conditional statement there. If zero, do something or don't do something. And that begs the question, well, is zero true or is it false? And it turns out that JavaScript, unlike a lot of languages, has quite a few values that it actually considers false. The way to attack this is actually to learn what the false values are, and then everything else is true. And there's not so many who can't easily memorize what these values are, but it's good to know which values are going to evaluate to false. Another thing, too, that we're going to point out here with respect to type is we've always talked about strings as primitive values. But we're going to quickly show you in this chapter that there are cases where strings start to look a lot like objects. In fact, you can call methods on them and you can use properties on strings. So we're going to walk through that, what it means, and how strings actually live a bit of a dual life. 
Now, while we're on the topic of strings, we'll also do a, just a little diversion into what some of the things are you can do to process strings. And it's kind of an important thing in JavaScript. You do a lot of string processing in JavaScript. Now, we wrap up the chapter with something called Chair Wars. And Chair Wars is really a bit of a story about two developers who are put up head to head to develop something in competition with, with each other. And we're just gonna walk through what goes on, how it happens, what their different techniques are, and what their final outcome is. And I won't ruin the surprise ending for you. Now finally, we end the chapter talking about equality between two objects. And there is a short story here and a very long story. The short story is that, as you know, variables just hold references to objects. They don't hold the object. And that makes equality at one level really easy. If we wanna compare two variables to see if they have equal objects in them, well, we just see if they have the same reference. And that applies to either the equal equal operators or the triple equal operator. That's the short story. The long story is there's a lot more to say about objects and whether or not they're equals. Because it's one thing to say that two objects are equal. It's another to ask if they're of the same type. So I could have a bunch of car objects, they're all different objects, but they may all be cars. And that may be good enough that a car is of car type when I'm writing object-oriented code. So we're gonna give you a little teaser at the end of this chapter. It's a little laboratory. Walk through it. You're probably not gonna get it all, but walk through it to the point where you're just looking at it and familiar with it enough to be very curious about what exactly is going on and to maybe have some hunches about what's going on. So again, that's the chapter on types and values. It's an interesting chapter. It's a different chapter and it launches you right into some more advanced object topics that we are going to go into in the next chapter.